Okay, so hey guys, in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at using the SAM D21 G18A microcontroller. Now, this is a very powerful microcontroller. It's used in the Arduino Zero. It's also used in a lot of Adafruit uh, circuit Python devices. So it's a really handy device, so we'll learn how to use it. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our um our project files right here we have project files you'll see that we have one header and one source file labeled app we also have a header and a source file for our clock and we have our, of course our main source file and a definitions header file um the arm cortex devices can be very complex especially when it pertains to clocks so what i'm going to do is i'm going to link my github so you can download this uh, example project and what i'll do is i'll walk through the source code so you'll understand so as you know in every application involving microcontrollers you have your main file in our main file you see that we have different sections how i like to structure my code is that i have uh, after I have my section reducing the file, um, author information, processor information, I like to give a little program description stating what this file or this program is about, then a hardware description. So in the hardware description, we'll have things like stating what pins are physically mapped to what devices and that kind of thing. We'll also have things like our change history or version history and what changes were made and also of course the date that the program was created next we'll have our include and definition section now this is where we have our includes and defines that will be used and throughout the application so this sam.h header file actually comes with the compiler and it contains definitions for pins and ports and stuff like that so that we don't actually need to be typing in hexadecimal addresses when we access registers you'll also see a definitions.h file if we look in our definitions.h file what we'll see is that we have definitions for things like ports so this led zero port is the port that we have already attached to any microcontroller um, this G clock main output, what this is, is that the microcontroller is configured so that on if we look at pin 28, pin PA28, what we'll see is that we can actually see the clock output of the microcontroller, the speed it is running at. Definitions for things like clock generators and the uh, main clock frequency, which is of course 48 megahertz. And we also have an external crystal connected to the device. So back to our main file. You see that we have an app.h file. Now usually in our main file, what we'll do is we'll have our main function. And that will usually have our main application in it. But for structure and purposes, sometimes it's better to have a separate application files. So instead of having everything into your main file, you have an application file and in that app.h or app.c file, you'll have all the definitions and your functions, your function prototypes that actually will be running your application. So the Cortex microcontroller software interface standard, usually you have a function called system in it, but we'll not be using system in it because we'll actually be doing our own application in it but you know i still include it here so that you'll see that usually in an arm cortex application you'll have this system in it function that is usually called as you know it's cortex microcontroller software interface standard compliant in an application in it so we well let me tell you first about our app files we have an app that each our header file and what that defines it is it defines two function prototypes we have a function prototype to initialize our application and one to keep the application running so 
if we go to our source file in our application after we have our headers we have the header setting up the clock and we also include the app.h header file which contains all our function definitions so in our application in it, we initialize our clocks our clock file um, like I said I don't think I'll, I'll go through all the details of this right now because um, it does complicate things but only to know is that we have an external oscillator that runs at 32.768 kilohertz in a phase lock loop to 48 megahertz and how this device is structured is that there are different uh, generic clocks you know clock generators that we can use that we can get the output of our different clock frequencies usually we use clock generator 0, clock generator 1 this will be explained as you go ahead with the tutorial you know I actually, I actually did a pre-recording where I went through all these different settings and bits and stuff but it's not really necessary to use the device so the best thing to do is uh, just download it from my github I'll link it in the description below and you'll be able to download this project and use it as a template so after we set up our clocks the next thing we do is we assign the LED as an output now we do this if we look at the SAMD21 microcontroller you'll see that there are two let's look at the data sheet so you'll understand so if we look at the data sheet for our port controller for our pin controller what we can see is that the IP controller has ports that controls the IO pins of the device now the IO pins are organized into two groups we have uh, port A and port B now if we look at right if we look at our pin configuration summary, we'll see that there are different registers we can configure to control our IO pin. We have our direction register, um, pull up enable, output enable, input enable, and according to how we configure these registers, we can allow different functions to take place on the IO pin. That's because of how the internal arrangement is set up. What we are doing here is we are assigning our LED as an output. So this um, reg four there is zero. What this does is it it sets direction. Um, this there is zero means that we'll be using port A. If I had said there one, then we'd have been using port B. And what we are doing is we are using uh, port A seventeen. If you remember. If you go to implementation, you see that this was actually port A17, um, port A pin 17 that we are using. So what we are doing here is we are assigning our LED as an output pin by configuring the direction register for port A. Next thing we are doing is we are setting the LED to an off manipulating the output clear register for port A now like I said once you see a zero appended here at the end of the register that we are manipulating you know that it belongs to port A if you see a one it means that we are manipulating port B so we initialize our application by initializing the clocks we set our LED as an output then we set that LED to off within our app run function now something that um, we should really look at is the drive strength of the IO pin on the device so let's go back to the data sheet now if we look at our IO pin characteristics we'll see if we scroll down we'll see that there's a certain amount of current that can be sunk or sourced from the IO pin. Now, 
when we source Quran, it means that we are letting Quran come from the IO pin on the microcontroller into whichever device or peripheral we are driving. When we are syncing current, it means that current is flowing from whichever device we are using into the microcontroller. Now, if we look at our characteristics, we will see that when the drive strength is set to 1, right? When the drive strength is set to 1, the, among the maximum current that the device can handle is a lot more. So, for example, if we are looking at the output high current level and let's see, say the device is running at 3.3 volts, so it's in the 3 volt to 3.63 volt range. If our drive strength is set to zero, then the maximum current that can be handled by that device is 2 milliamps. However, if we set our drive strength to one, the maximum current it can handle is 7 milliamps. When we are driving things like LEDs, current from switches, and stuff like that, we want to ensure that we always have our drive strength set to 1. So, that's what we are doing here. We are setting our drive strength to strong. There are two modes. If we configure our drive strength as 0, then it's set to be in a normal drive strength mode. However, when we set our drive strength to 1, then it's for strong drive operation. After we set our drive strength to strong, what we do is we turn our LED on. Now, we do this by manipulating the outset register. So as you see again, it's, ma it's appended by this zero right here. So we know that it belongs to port A of the microcontroller. So what this line of code does, it will turn our LED on. So after everything is finished, what you want to do is you want to run this code. And after you run this code, you'll see that our LED turn that is connected to port A, pin 17, will be turned on. So make sure and uh, check out the code in the description. You can download this project from GitHub. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video.